it is an honor and privilege for me to welcome you all a very good afternoon to all of you i drop the navita pare extend my warm welcome to all of you on the behalf of rajasthan technical library association to this third international webinar series of rtla in collaboration with informatic publishing limited well someone rightly said that the aim of education in the knowledge not of the facts but of value it is an occasion like this we get the opportunity to taste of knowledge and understanding we look forward to get an exposure about our learning and expand our knowledge now please allow me to publicly express my gratitude to our honorable guests and participants dr richard gartner digital librarian at gobber institute university of london and dr santosh kataria university librarian at banat university noida rajasthan technical library association is grateful to both of you sir for having kindly accepted our invitation and sparing of your valuable time to honor us by being our guest on this third international webinar series of art thanks a lot and welcome from my side now i am taking privilege to welcome mr devinder thakur from information Pub informatics publishing limited without their support it could not be possible for us so thanks a lot sir for your unconditional support from your publication house and welcome you in this webinar series now I'd like to request to Dr. Rajkumar Bhakar sir, partner of RTL and chief librarian and professor at JJ University, Delhi, for a brief introduction about Rajasthan Technical Library Association. Please sir. Are you audible, Namita? Yes, yes sir. Very yes sir. Very similar to audible. Start. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. I, Dr. Rajkumar Bhakar, partner of Rajasthan Technical Library Association. and associate professor library and information science at sri jagdish prasad jabarwal tibde wala university junjino welcome to experts coordinators conveners my rtla team and all participants of the occasion of the third rtla webinar series in this pandemic covid 19 with the collaboration of informatics publishing limited on behalf of rtla and as a patron I want to brief you about Rajasthan Technical Library Association. Dear all, you know that a library association is the foundation of the which the structure of the library moment can be founded. It is the source of continuous energy that can energize all the activities and the provision and the maintenance of library service. Library association play an important role in the promotion of literacy as a profession vital to an informed and knowledgeable society. Library association in Indian as well as Rajasthan and other states have been playing an important role in conveying useful messages and guidelines for the library development, acting. in the integrated era meeting place professionals helping them exchange opinions and promoting free access though to informing while while facing serious essential political culture and financially challenges the main of the rajasthan technical library association are the library professional to build up a body of professional experience to help library provide Effective service the student and trainees, mutual cooperation and assistance among various libraries in the country to cooperate the national and international level association in the continuous their objectives. Here all the <coughs> ideas of establishment of RTLA came in April 2010, and finally 100 plus libraries from across. the rajasthan assemble at marani garden mansrovar jaipur on may 26 2010 they all have nominated a patron 
After some days, various other officers also elected, like President, General Secretary, Tej Raj, ADC. So finally, Rajasthan Technical Library Association came into existence in the June 2010, and it is established under the Rajasthan Non-Trade Trading Companies Act 1960. After 10 years of the establishment of the association, it is a working very well for the community during a very short period. RTLA has achieved such things which were not yet found. We got the third grade school library recruitment for the first time of Rajasthan after 1994 in continuous of the success. Government of the Ra Rajasthan has again announced 700 vacancies of third grade and 12 vacancies of second grade librarians field. The journey is not ended. We are trying to contact government of Rajasthan for college librarians, third grade librarians, vacancies as soon as possible. In addition, we are talking with the concerned authority for the full implementation of the Public Library Act in Rajasthan, opening libraries at Gram Panchayat level, the appointment of trained librarian in these libraries, it is our priority to the government should fill all schools, colleges, and universities, librarian weekend post as soon as possible. The RTLA celebrates its annual function of the holding a seminar or workshop every year which various expert lectures are conducted to library professionals to enhance their skills and update themselves. So far, we have conducted six such programs in the various places, like first in the 2012 at Sri Balaji College of Engineering and Technology, Jaipur. Second in the 2014 in Hotel Swim Ajmer Road, Jaipur. Third in the 2017 Ananta Medical College, Udaipur. Fourth, 2017 RCW Bhakrota, Jaipur. Fifth in the 2019 at JK Lakshmi Pat University, Jaipur. And the sixth Sri Jagdish Pacha Javanbar Thirdewal University, Chodela Junjuno. Dear all, at last, I am very thankful to today's expert, Dr. Richard Kartena, Digital Librarian. War Bark Institute, University of London, and Sanjay Kataria, University Librarian, Bennett University, Umar Abbas, coordinator of this program, Dr. Pawan Seni and Dr. Roshan Chaudhary, ex-president of RTLA, Dr. Anita Jain, president of RTLA, Dr. Bhup Singh, general secretary, Dr. Mukesh Patak, Namita Parikh, Dr. Vichya, uh, Rajiv Pandey, Subhas Seni, Ritu Gujran, Sarda Kala, Hira Mani, Tirveni Sarma, and all my RTLA team. Last but not least, I also thank you to Mr. Devendra Thakurji from Information Publishing Limited for collaboration of the program. My also again thanks you all to join today's program. Jai Hind, Jai Bhat, stay home, stay safe. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable words. And I would like to say that in your guidance and in your support, RTLA will do their best. Thank you so much. Now, I would like to request Dr. Anita Jain, ma'am, president of RTLA, for the, her welcome note. Proceed, ma'am. Thank you, Namita. Very good afternoon, everyone. I am audible. May I audible? Very much audible, ma'am. Very much audible. Please start. A very good afternoon to everyone. I, Dr. Anita Jain, President of Rajasthan Technical Library Associations, welcome you all and thanks a lot for joining us in today's webinar. Rajasthan Technical Library Associations, RTLA, is a well known state level library and information professional association. The core objective of RTLA is to provide a common platform to library professionals for exchange of latest updates, sharing new knowledge and improve the quality of library and information center, along with strengthening the welfare for library professionals. Today, 
I am very happy to share that we have two very most knowledgeable speaker for the webinar. Firstly, I am taking a provis provise to introduce with you all our first speaker is Dr. Richard, the Richard, the janitor, digital librarian, Warbink Institute, University of London, and he has worked as both a what both a part practicing library in a, in an academic throughout his career and com combustion both fest function is to this day today he will put his word on the topic the uh, along and the virtual wear is the librarian and our second speaker is dr sanjay kataria librarian bennett university with more than two decades decade in rich and and fulfilling work experience. He, he conceptualized EWTLI's International Symposium on Emerging Trend and Technology in Libraries, an international platform for sharing global best practice for librarianship, which was held for the first time in 2008. Dr. Kataria also introduced a unique concept for promoting library resources services and facilities among scholar community through which learning games workshops virtual seminar etc welcome sir today he will talk on the topic research support service in academic libraries i hope that this session is going to be very useful and information informative for all last but not least i would like to welcome and wants to say thanks to dr rajkumar bakar sir to be here because today he he is having very important meeting but still he is sparing time for this event thanks lot sir lot sir for being with us and heartily welcome in this webinar thanks for joining stay home and stay safe thank you Thanks a lot, ma'am, for your uh, thanks a lot, ma'am, for your kind words. Now, uh, it's my request to all the participants that the be aware that I'm going to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Richard Gardner, and I want to repeat his brief introduction. Please hear it very really carefully. Dr. Richard Gardner has worked as both practicing librarian and an academic throughout his career, and combines with both functions to this day. He serves. For the three years as the Pearson New Media Librarian at the Bodleian Library, Oxford, where he was responsible for the library's first digitization project, the, the introduction of the internet into the library, and the first zero network. He followed this by six years as a lecturer in the Department of Humanities at King's College, London, before. Joining the war work as a first digital librarian, his primary research is in the theory and the practice of metadata, particularly in digital libraries. He has been published more than 10 articles in the national and international journals and in the conferences and seminars also. Today, he is going to share his knowledge on the topic of analog and the virtual, where is the library? Uh, first, I'm going to, uh, lastly, I'm going to repeat as uh, Dr. Thakur's words. Before we get started, if you have any question during the presentation, please type into the QA box in your control panel. We will bring them up there in the after the presentation, and we will also have time for question and answer at the end. Now, without further ado, we will turn the time over to our respected speaker. Dr. Richard Gartner, please proceed. Thank you so much, Dr. Perry. Can everyone hear me? Um, I just wanted to check as... Yeah, my... sir, you are very much audible. You can start now. Okay, I, everyone can hear me. That's yeah. good. Um, because I am in my apartment and um, I am using my home Wi-Fi and it may not be um, of the highest quality. I'm glad that everyone can hear me. I will share my screen now. 
Um, first of all, may I thank uh, uh, Dr. Parikh for her introduction and Dr. Katari uh, for um, inviting me to this prestigious um, webinar. It's a great honor to meet so many of my colleagues virtually. Um, I should keep, I shall start my talk now. Let me share my screen. Attempt to share my screen. One second, please. There we are. Um, I hope everyone can hear me and see the screen now. So, um, please uh, put something in the chat if, if um, the connection is interrupted or if there are any problems. Um, so my talk is called The Analogue and the Virtual, Where is the Librarian in the Digital Library? And I speak on this subject partly from my own experience as my role is as a digital librarian. Uh, but I also have a, a long um, career as a librarian per, per se, not just in the virtual realm. So uh, if I could just introduce myself, um, in addition to uh, Dr. Parikh's uh, kind words. I work um, now at, I shall attempt to, uh, there we are. <laughs> this is where I work. This is a Warburg Institute in London which is a humanities research institute concerned particularly with the history of art, um, the classical tradition, the Greek and Roman tradition and its effect on the humanities and so on. Um, it's a rather wonderful place to work and my role there is digital librarian where I'm in charge of the institute's digitization program. And the main output of my work, if I might call it that, is the Warburg Digital Library which is a series of digitized books from the historical collections of the library. Um, the Warburg Institute is named as such after a, a German art historian called A.B. Warburg, who built up a library in Hamburg in Germany, which was moved to London in the 1930s, um, containing much interesting historical material. And as part of this, we have been digitizing several hundred books, um, which we are putting into the, the collections that you see here. Uh, the first collection, as you see, is called Magic and Science, because he was very much interested in magic in all its manifestations and its relationship with science. Um, if I can make it back a long way in my career, uh, almost 30 years ago now, I worked for the Bodleian Library in the University of Oxford as their new media librarian. And I participated in some of the very early digitization projects we did there. Um, this was the first project I worked upon, uh, which went live in 1996, almost 25 years ago now, which was a collection of ephemera um, concerned with transport, which was sponsored by the motor car company Toyota, hence the subject area. Um, and this is, this is a very early digitization project. Um, after this, I was involved in another project, which was called the Internet Library of Early Journals, where we scanned in 20-year runs of journals from the 18th and 19th century. And this was a rather more ambitious project, which was um, groundbreaking in its time, um, I, I'm very pleased to say. Uh, so I worked as a librarian on many digitization projects in the past, and I continue to do so now. But between the two, I worked as a lecturer in the Department of Digital Humanities um, at King's College London, which is when I first met Dr. Katari, who kindly in, invited me today. And um, when I was at King's, I was the coordinator for a master's program called Digital Asset and Media Management, which was all concerned with the production, management, and preservation of what are known as digital assets. Um, now, this course was actually approved by the Library Association in, UK, in the UK called SILIP, so that those who took, uh, completed it became, were considered qualified librarians. Um, now, the question I would like to really look at today is from my own experience, both as a teacher of digital asset management and as a librarian, can we consider the, the, the digital librarian, people such as myself, 
as a real librarian or more as a digital asset manager? And uh, to do that, I, I'd really like to ask some questions about the, what we might call the paradigms, the overriding principles that both librarians and digital asset managers follow to work out uh, what the overlap is between the two and whether a person such as myself can consider myself more a librarian or a digital asset manager. So um, when we talk about librarianship, I think we can say that for centuries, if not millennia, we've been ruled by uh, a paradigm which I would call the custodial paradigm. The idea that we are custodians of knowledge. Um, we look after collections, make them available, and as such we curate knowledge. Um, I think this is a paradigm which has existed for, as I say, centuries, but it has been challenged in the last 15 years or so by a number of well-known people, um, well-known scholars in this area. And there's a seminal article written in 2003 by Jennifer Rowley called Knowledge Management the new librarianship question mark from custodians of history to gatekeepers to the future. Now in this article, Rowley challenged what I would consider the custodial paradigm and said that the role of the librarian these days tends to be more towards the digital asset manager. And she says the main role of the librarian these days is to manage a knowledge repository facilitate the, 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 the flow of knowledge and communication and to add value to what uh, to the contents of our libraries, the, the stock, um, the, 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 what we actually um, guard as custodians. So she is really suggesting that librarianship is now digital asset management because all of these roles are, are significant in digital asset management. For those who do not know the term, uh, I will show you one of the key definitions around, which is by Albert van Niekerk in, in a seminal article from 2006. And he described digital asset management as all the tasks needed to allow the ingest, annotation, cataloging, storage, retrieval, and distribution of digital assets. Now, I think if we look at this immediately, there's a lot of overlap between what librarians do, certainly, um, despite the new digital format here. Um, so we, if we want to look at the relationship between digital asset management and librarianship, let's ask ourselves what librarians do. And I found a very useful definition comes from Shirley Baker, who was for a long time the Dean of Libraries at Washington University Libraries. And she said, we do four main things. We select, we acquire, we classify, we provide equitable access, access as free as possible and we preserve. And I think this is a very, very short, but very precise um, statement of what librarians do. So what I've done in the next slide is to compare Van nie Niemark and Baker's definition of what digital asset management is, and what librarianship is, and to, to see what overlap we have. And if you look at Van Niemark's six possible um, functions of digital asset management, I think we can find correlations with Baker's quite easily. What he calls ingest is what we would call select and acquire, I think. Cataloging is what she calls classify. Storage is what she calls preservation and retrieval and distribution are what we, she calls providing equitable access. I think those are all fairly clear. The one that I have a question mark here on is annotation. Van Niekerk says that a very important part of digital asset management is to annotate the materials, to add value to them, to make them more useful. Uh, I don't think it's an exact analogue um, with Van Niemark's, uh, with Baker's suggestions, although classification comes close to it. So I think one of the issues that uh, we as librarians have to look at when we move from digital asset, uh, from the analogue, the physical book, to the digital world is a question of what the nature of the book is uh, when it's in this new medium. And I call the book here the intangible book because it doesn't have the physicality of the uh, traditional item on the library shelf. And this has a series of ramifications. And this is the area where we might think the librarian has to become more of a digital asset manager. But I, I will argue later on that we are still librarians nonetheless. <laughs> 
So the differences we need to consider when we talk about the intangible book, the digitized book that, for instance, um, we have in the Warburg Digital Library, these are the factors we have to consider. The digital object, the book itself, is not instantly readable. It's tied to media which are opaque. It is on optical media, it is on tape media, it is on the cloud. These media are to some extent opaque, much more than the page on the printed book. So we need to decode it in some way to be able to read it. Um, this adds a new layer of complexity to the way we, we have to approach these objects. Uh, the object itself may be highly complex as well, much more so than the physical book. Uh, when we look at the physical book, all of the pages are glued into the book, which puts them into the, uh, an order in, which allows us to read it in sequence and make sense of it. Now, a digitized book, such as we have in the Warburg Digital Library, may consist of 500 and perhaps 1,000 images of pages, which will have to be curated, put together, and um, turn into a coherent whole to be able to replicate this uh, um, physical book, which is much, much simpler. So we are dealing with much more complex objects here, which introduces that whole, whole extra layer to our discipline. And the object itself may exhibit many, many manifestations. <clears throat> uh, a, a digitized book in the Warburg Library, for instance, can be browsed online, but we can also make PDFs available. We also have archival copies as well, which are the images stored at much higher resolution without compression. So we have to deal with rather more manifestations in a single book. Um, and the media that this is all stored on can deteriorate much more rapidly than paper. Um, we still have books on paper which are several hundred years old, if not older, uh, which are still perfectly usable. Tape media, for instance, may only have a life of five, 10, perhaps 20 years if we're lucky. So we have to introduce a whole new discipline of uh, preservation and copying them to new media and so on to ensure they do not deteriorate. So the intangible book, as I call it, presents all sorts of new issues which we have to deal with. Now, to deal with all of these issues, um, the, the Digital Asset Manager has produced a number of models um, which show the stages we have to go through to manage um, a book or any other digital asset properly. And what I would like to do is introduce you to a very sim simple one which has been produced by the Digital Library of New Zealand called the Digital Content Lifecycle. And this shows um, the stages we have to go through to create and maintain the digital content, let's say a digital book. And as you see, it is usually described as a circle like this, because once we've created a book and managed it and people have found it and reused it, they create new digital content as well. And so begin the life cycle again. So what I'd like to do for the next stage of my talk is to look at some of the features of this life cycle and try and assess to what extent these are the same as a traditional librarian's role and to which extent they are different in some way or supplemented and require new skills as well. So I'll go through each of these in, in turn very briefly because I <laughs> would not want to detain you all evening. Um, let me start here with selection which I do think is a, a role which has a good deal of overlap. Um, to create a digital library, one has to curate it properly, and a key part of that is to have a coherent collection policy. And this is a function that librarians have, and this is a, a skill we are taught in at library college. And it is one that uh, it is very important to have a librarian's um, oversight in. Um, so here I think definitely the digital asset manager, the curator of a digital library is definitely a librarian and has to bring the librarian skills to, to, to do this properly. So I don't think there's any argument there. Now, the area where there is a, a slight a difference here, I think between um, librarians and uh, in the analog and the digital world is the whole idea of the creation of a digital object. In most cases, the librarian will receive a, a book uh, from the publisher and will um, uh, process it, uh, catalog it and put it on the shelves. Uh, so the role in creation is somewhat uh, less, um, less of an issue um, in, in their daily lives. But when it comes to the digital library, to some extent, we become publishers. 
if we look at the digital library which I create, the material in question itself is, was published several hundred years ago, but the new edition we create here and present with all of its uh, facilities for um, browsing, for viewing a table of contents and so on, is a new creation in its, its own right. We become um, creators of a new editor. To, to some extent, the digital librarian becomes a publisher, which is a new role for them um, in some ways and requires a whole new set of skills to present um, a digital object effectively. Um, so here I think there is an, a new role for librarians, um, but it's not one that's entirely uh, unknown, of course, because librarians have been publishers in the past and um, continue to be so. Um, it's an important role for librarians, but even more so in, in the case of a digital library. So if we move on to the next box here, the role of describing. Now, this is something which librarians have been doing for a long time, of course in the production of catalogue records, um, what we call descriptive metadata. And um, if we look at um, the digital library here, one of the features of the interface we have is to click on this little button that's the I, it says I, which stands for information, and we get a catalogue record, a standard catalogue record, which actually is derived from the mark record for this book in the University Library catalogue. So, um, in this respect, uh, a digital librarian is very much a librarian because we have to catalogue these works properly following all of the standards which have evolved over, over many years and um, which librarians have a great deal of experience. There is a slight addition to the role of the cataloguer as a, a digital librarian because we, not only do we have to describe the work as a whole as we see here, but each of the components um, needs a description as well. Um, as I said, a book like this is com comprised of possibly 700, several hundred images, which all have to be dis uh, put into a sequence and um, a reasonable um, description of each page has to be given, in, usually for something very simple like this. Um, but also we have to create a virtual table of content. So the role of the, the dis description here extends beyond the level of the work as a whole to its individual components. And I think this is another area where the digital librarian differs very slightly from the analog, uh, but it's a matter of degree rather than a fundamental change. So I think so far, I think we, we, we are agreeing that um, the digital librarian is very much a librarian, perhaps with also the additional role of, of the publisher. Now, two other boxes here that we see here, managing and preserving, are an area where um, the digital library must deal with rather more complex issues than the analog. And to do this, um, the um, digital library community and the digital asset community have produced a whole series of models for how we can handle the whole process of managing these complex objects and preserving them particularly. And I would like to just show you now one of them, which I won't go into any detail about, just to show you some of the detailed issues which have to be addressed to manage and preserve digital objects. Um, this model, which men, digital asset managers know very well indeed, is a model for what's called an open archival information system, which is all of the components which have to go into creating and maintaining an archive for digital objects. Um, I won't go into any great detail, but each of these boxes is a particular function which has to be addressed and all of the items in ovals are um, the metadata and the data which have to be um, ha um, used to allow these functions to operate. So we have to start a fine mechanism to ingest our digital objects, provide access to them, and then in the middle handle the data management and the archival storage. So these are very complex roles, and this is an area where the digital librarian has to take on new skills, uh, not necessarily in, um, in great technical detail, because they will be talking to the people, the computer scientists and the technicians who will be doing this sort of thing, but they have to have some knowledge of the issues involved, I think, particularly when it comes to digital preservation, to do their job effectively and to tell the technicians what to do. So this is an area, I think, where the librarian does learn some new skills, but I would argue, nonetheless, that these are librarians and the skills involved are those of librarianship. Um, we're almost at the end of this digital content life cycle. These two boxes here are, are what we allow our users to do. Um, everything we've been doing so far is facilitating these two. 
allowing them to discover material and use and reuse it. So if we have done our job properly, um, like, um, our users should be able to do this effectively. And of course, this, this is what we do in an analog library as well. We facilitate discovering and uh, using and reusing. So I, I think um, all of these, in all of these areas, the librarian is an important um, contributor and um, the skills of librarianship are paramount, I think. Um, so having gone through the, um, all of these um, models and the role of the, the life cycle, I'd like to ask, go back to some of the fundamentals of librarianship and to ask whether in the context of what we've seen here, the librarian is still a librarian. And I would argue very much that they are. And here I would like to bring in our, um, the great uh, Ranganathan, whom I often um, introduce to my students and to my fellow librarians, and his five rules of librarianship, which I'm sure we all know as well. Books are for use, every reader his or her book, every book its reader. Save the time of the reader and the library must be a growing organism. Now, uh, in the digital age, these have been rewritten sometimes um, by, it, it, with more or less success in a few cases, I think. Um, Naruzi in 2004 rewrote them for web resources in this way. Web resources are for use. Every user, his or her web resource, every web resources user, save the time of the user, and the web is a growing organism. Um, rather later, Simpson, in his five laws, revisited, 2004, um, talked about digital media and applied the word digital media and patron. Every patron his information, every medium its user. The library is a growing organism. This is all very true. I'd like to talk in the role of digital books, um, the digital books we've had in the Warburg. And if I had to write Ranganathan, which I would not want to do, I would just insert the role, the word digital before books. So <laughs> I'm not going to write an article on this, but nonetheless, I would, I would say Ranganathan's rules for the digital librarian are that digital books are for use. Every reader his or her digital book. Every digital book should have its reader. We should save the time of the reader and the digital library must be a growing organism. And I would argue very much that the librarian skills, the traditional skills of the librarian are essential to ensure that the Ranganathan's rules apply just as much to the digital world and, uh, as to the analog. And for my final slide, I'd like to talk about what makes the digital librarian a librarian. Uh, and again, I will refer to, to Baker's four principles as well. So these are the areas in which the library, digital librarian is very much a librarian. Collection building and management. These require the skills of the librarian to do this coherently and effectively. So these, this is a select and acquire from uh, Baker's um, uh, uh, four facets. Standards-based metadata classify, uh, as Baker calls it, we have to ensure that metadata in the digital library is very, very robust and coherent. We cannot um, rely, rely on a free-for-all or an amateurish approach to this, and we have to apply the principles of metadata classification and catalogue in which librarians have developed over centuries. And this is where the librarian must be a, libra a digital librarian must be a librarian. Otherwise, the digital library can become an enormous mess and almost unusable. I also say that the libra digital library must have a user focus, providing equitable access. Um, again, this is a skill which librarians acquire through practice and through interfacing with users. And I, I myself, as a digital librarian, nonetheless spend several hours a week on the reference desk helping users in the library, and I feel this is essential to ensure that as a digital librarian I can understand the needs of users and provide the necessary focus. And I also think that librarians have a long tradition of preservation and they have a long perspective. Uh, so we understand the importance of preservation. Now, digital preservation in its own is, is a, a new discipline and a very complex one, but it's important to have the librarian's perspective to know how to apply it effectively. So that's the fourth area in which I think particularly the digital librarian is a librarian. So I hope that answers my initial question. Is a digital librarian a librarian or a digital asset manager. To some extent it's both, but primarily we are librarians and I think we need to 
acknowledge that and be proud of our role as librarians. So thank you very much for listening. And I hope um, I will, of course, be very happy to take any questions uh, arising from my talk. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, sir. It was a very informative session. And I would like to say I took pleasure to through your presentation. I found that your presentation was one of the most engaging that I have ever had the privilege to the listen and found myself captivated by every word of yours. The amount of attention you gave to the future needs of the librarian and library professional is very tremendous. I offer my thanks to taking the time to share your knowledge with us. Thanks a lot. My pleasure. It's been a great honor. Now, it's time to introduce our second speaker. And we have a very honorable second speaker with us. I want to please uh, give some brief details about Dr. Sanjakataria, sir. With more than 20 years of rich work experience, Dr. Sanjakataria is presently working as a university librarian, Spanish University, Greater Noida. Dr. Kataria has contributed about uh, 35 research papers in the Rapidate General International Conferences, and he has also written and edited more than 10, uh, 10 books, conferences, proceedings also. He is on board of several prestigious national and international journals as an editor and member to. He has been awarded several international fellowships and awards, including Common Bill Professional Fellowship in 2012 at Middlesex University, London. He has honored by Madhya Pradesh Library Association for the University Librarian of the University of the Year 2019 Award for his professional and scholarly contribution globally. Today, he is going to share his knowledge on the topic of research support services in academic libraries. Thank you, sir, for being with us and please proceed. Good afternoon, and thank you very much for your kind introduction. I'm audible? Yes, sir, very much audible. Please start. So, let me start. Let me convey my gratitude first. And firstly, let me welcome and thanks our special speaker and guest of the day, Dr. Richard Gardner. Richard, thank you very much for accepting our invitation, sharing your thought and experience. And Dr. Richard is a very experienced librarian and working so long as in a digital librarian. And earlier he was in a faculty at King's College London. I met him in 2012 during my fellowship at uh, uh, King's College London. And having a long association with him, uh, you know, since last one decade. And uh, he always helping us, guiding us, supporting us. So thank you, Richard, for your, uh, again, uh, excellent uh, presentation. Though India has a different kind of practice, uh, I will let you know, uh, let, uh, I will explain later on. And uh, then let me also convey my gratitude to the organizer of this uh, webinar. First and foremost, uh, thanks to our uh, patron of this association, RTLA, Mr. Dr. Bakar, and President Dr. Nita Jain, Mr. Abbas, and all my, you know, entire team of this uh, organizing committee of this webinar. Special thanks to informatic Mr. Thakur. So, uh, you know, inviting me and uh, giving me opportunity to share my views and experience today on this important uh, webinar. Before starting my presentation, I would like to uh, discuss and raise a few questions because uh, practice as a librarianship in India is entirely different than other countries. Richard, uh, India do not have a kind of librarians the way uh, UK universities having a different kind of positions and structure, uh, staffing structure. Because what I'm going to speak, the research support services in UK, most of university libraries, 
they have a subject librarians basically role of subject librarian librarians are nothing but to liaison with the department or the school just to understand their requirement and to support them so each and every department and school there is an having a librarian subject librarian or the liaison officer but here in india our staffing structure or the you know library system is entirely different than other uh, uh, western universities today i'm going to speak how uh, the library can support uh, research uh, activities of the university and how library librarian can contribute in enhancement of the research activities nowadays in this present era there is a great uh, very a lot of uh, challenges uh, before the libraries and librarians because after evolution of this electronic resources e books e journals e databases now there is a major problem with the libraries that user is not turning to with the, to the libraries footfall of the library is very you know decreasing day by day because all the resources what a user is expecting looking for they are getting access of the resources at their doorstep next question there is why they should come to the library again another challenge is that library is in a center of heavy investment libraries also occupied and a very important space of a university library university system and along with a lot of infrastructure staffing and all so a lot of investment another part of the library resources infrastructure and space so therefore it is really very really difficult to make a justification with all heavy investment with the libraries now there is a big question how to make a library and librarian is more relevant in this present era where the user are getting everything access at their doorstep and then how what will be what will be the role of libraries so as mr dr richard is explained there is a great role of libraries library can act as a publisher library can be a publishing partner of the institution and many of universities look at in you know abroad they have already started in a you know university press and oxford university press is again one of the initiative from the university itself cambridge university press many more similar way there is a lot of opportunities the librarian but we need to enhance our scope we need to come forward to support academic and research fraternity in different ways so i'm going to discuss how library can be in one of the important part one of the important entity of the university and not uh, teaching fraternity and the research community cannot survive without a library and how librarian to make this library is more important in this present digital era <clears throat> library is no more the silent place nowadays library is in a acting as a happening place there was a concept of the library that a place with a complete silence and having a kind of resources available over there and users supposed to come and consult of those resources no the time has gone now library is completely happening place now i'll let you know how libraries can act in a happening place nowadays we just need to redesign the library space are what actually this this google generation the digital generation what they look forward they want a kind of space where they can come together they can sit in groups they can chat they can discuss they can collaborate with the teachers the student can explore further we need to repackage the library resources because now there is no more they don't have time to explore hundreds of databases or the general online this is again great of lab, role of librarian to curate all the resources together package repackage those resources and make them available to the users so that they can make use of those resources without spending without wasting their time 
here and there. So I'm going to focus today on how libraries can support research activities. So let me uh, tell you, uh, uh, say something about Bennett University is a very one of the one of the young university in this country. We are just going to complete four year in this August. We have at present we have no four schools: School of Engineering and Applied Sciences, School of Law, School of Management, Time School of Media. More than uh, two thousand five hundred students are st studying in this university. And you can, whenever you feel free, can visit the our library website and can see the kind of initiatives, kind of services, kind of resources available with the Bennett University and kind of activity especially. You can see how librarian can engage themselves in this uh, present situations. This pandemic, COVID-19, what we did? Now, no one can, now, no matter, there's a concept of the library. Library can close, learning cannot close. No, learning cannot stop. Library is closed, stopped, you know, access of the users, but we made an, uh, you know, provision and nowadays our whole library resources, electronic resources now available, accessible remotely through, uh, th uh, remotely 24 into 7. User concept is the user are carrying their library with them always and they should have to have a content and connectivity. So, this is the learning source center of the Bennett University. And we have a variety of resources and services. And one of the important services in an institutional repository, which I will be discussing the, on later. Again, we have an, initiated the learning, uh, this Athenium, one of the electronic e-newsletters from the library, just to create an awareness among scholarly uh, fraternity of Bennett University. More than three lakhs e-resources are available. And we also have started the subject guides and other activities in the Bennett University. Our library at Bennett is completely automated. We are using 3M RFID system and complete library. So this COHA is integrated with RFID. And there is no, I think so. This is the only university in this NCR. They don't, we don't have a circulation desk. You are supposed to come and pick their books and can get issue written books their own. Now let me focus on this today topic, what we are talking, going to talk about research support services. This services, research support is quite new in India. I have a few institutions in India started research support services, but this is very common in Western universities, UK universities or USC universities. So now next question is that why, they, why should we start this kind of services in the university libraries? Again, look at this, you know, university's ranking. If you look at the ranking of uh, Times Higher Education ranking or NIRF ranking, QS ranking, main and major portion, you know, grading, uh, you know, criteria is the research, research activity. And if you can see all the top five university listed in Times Higher Education ranking, they have a major concern is the research. Again, if you look at an Indian Indian uh, ranking system, NIRF, again, the NIRF is also considering the major concern is uh, research, teaching, research, teaching and learning. And library is in a individually very uh, small role to play, but how library is very important, you know, not only the library, but can help in all these, you know, major factor, the major criteria is the research, how we can support the research, how we can enhance the research. Before initiating these services at Bennett University, I just gone through the different university website. I just gone through the website of, uh, you know, Harvard University libraries. Then I gone through the, uh, just uh, have a uh, thorough study of that uh, Cambridge University libraries, Oxford University libraries, and some more libraries, just to understand why those universities always are on the top. What kind of services, resources, techniques, technology, they're using in the libraries and kind of the system they're supporting the research and research and academic fraternity. So taking a cue from this institution, I designed my own uh, this uh, services, uh, research support services, which I'm going to discuss now. 
these services we design by taking cue from these all these institutions now library support services research support services in the library contrast is nothing but kind of first and foremost we need to understand the research you know all the research process and research activities and we should again need to collaborate with that academia and the research fraternity and again before you know extending the services we should equip ourselves first because until unless we are not aware we are not in you know not uh, not completely having a skill uh, with that you know how to use a kind of uh, reference management software how to extract that you know uh, citation uh, information from citation databases and more research tools so as i told this is the first we need to understand the research process what exactly is the research process research is always starting with the search searching and exploring the different literature literature, literature coming uh, you know curated from different sources and this is the role of libraries because libraries always involved in curation of the resources and uh, in different uh, sources and i design 4p plan perform publish and preserve this is the one of the important role i design my own conceptual uh, framework for the research support services which i am going to discuss step by step so this is the research uh, you know understanding of research process how the research is you know being conducted by scholar community now how library can connect all these research process when they they are going to plan identifying a problems they should how to have go through the different kind of literature again library 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 professional are well equipped they are, they they have a kind of skills like a bibliometrics analysis they know how to analyze the data publication data and then based on that what we can do we can just extract the inform, literature from the different citation databases or other sources and can analyze that based on the requirement of the you know scholar community i will come again on this slide but let me show you how the other libraries can initiate the research support services in their universities this is the conceptual research uh, framework which i designed in banati university before implementing the research support services we have this 4p planning perform publish preserve and how this this four step stages are connecting the research activities in my university how we are supporting our research scholars so first and foremost although i am teaching the research scholar at banati university i'm teaching to phd students and first and foremost in my first class i'm telling them what is the difference between the google and research uh, library resources because 80 to 90% scholar they used to start their research with the google or the google scholars but google is uh, you know not enough because google has not indexed all the you know scholarly uh, communication therefore and google having a different more things i'll let you show how google google just indexing a web pages and content can be created by anyone i i, I design my you know pod, uh, say my uh, blog and you know i created my blog and uh, putting uh, indexing the google and i wrote that india uh, the delhi is situated in japan and google when you are searching about delhi and that my blog is showing that in delhi is situated in Paki, uh, this japan that means it is giving a mis uh, misinformation fake information so google is not exactly the reliable is not verified content which is available and index in the google is not having a peer review system not having control over the people so anything can be indexed by the google at any time again when you talking about the library resources library whatever resources you are subscribing the library that is completely controlled that is reviewed peer reviewed you know content content quality content there is no there is no chance of the fake and you know other kind of information in the library again when you are exploring the resource uh, you know uh, search to google giving a thousand million billions of uh, research results but when you are using that library resources so that having a very limited refined and accurate uh, you know literature so these are the you know differences between google and the you know library resources and why the scholar should make use the library resources than google again 
what we are doing in my Bernard University, we are extracting the literature from different uh, citation databases, Google Scholar, PubMed, all other, you know, databases, and mapping the, you know, their uh, faculty, uh, faculty profiles, and they, even though when the research scholar is entering in the research, we are having a first introduction class, we are asking them, we are trying to know them, their research uh, domain, and exploring the, uh, this all literature from different sources and make those uh, literature available to the research scholar. These are the, then after whatever the research, you know, literature has extracted from all these, uh, you know, different sources, then after we are helping them in getting the download of the literature and by, and also asking them to make use of the reference management software and these tools like Mendeley and Dot or whatever, we are using a Mendeley here. So, whatever literature they have extracted from different sources and uh, downloaded, then after we are helping them to create their personal library by using a Mendeley. This is one of the important uh, aspect. So one let a uh, scholar create their own personal library in a Mendeley and then after they can start citing and they can start a literature review. Well, while they're reviewing the literature by using a Mendeley management so reference management software, they can manage their citations. They can manage their references automatically. So this is the feature. They are saving a lot of time of the scholar uh, while they while they are using Mendeley ref reference management software uh, at the time uh, during their uh, you know literature review. Again, that library can facilitate them as a grammar check software while they are writing research. They, they because English is are not our native language and uh, hardly that you know scholar is uh, having expertise on you know writing uh, good uh, scholarly uh, you know uh, research so therefore they require kind of check their language before submitting their research to the publisher for publication so this is the again role of library to make and available all these kind of facilities for the research scholar then plagiarism check services is one of the important from the library itself now is a very common University Grant Commission in India is also given a guideline and implement UGC, they also are extending kind of support and made an available Orkund uh, software for uh, plagiarism check into all the universities in this country. And now student can check uh, their document uh, manuscript before submission to the publisher. Important is not to uh, make available the of the you know this tool uh, to the uh, scholar community, but important is that to help them while they're analyzing the similarity report. Similar because uh, not a single, not a software in this world it can detect the plagiarism. They just giving a the similarity report, a similarity index kind of sources the scholar has used from different sources and they're indicating uh, indicating in different colors and highlighting the text. Again, there is a role of the you know, librarians, research scholar or the supervisor to analyze this report properly because similarity rate is a 30% can be, cannot be plagiarized, but similarity rate 5% can be plagiarized. This is very tricky, need to have more attention and need to understand all this process. Plagiarism, as I said, uh, each and every university now uh, as per UGC guideline, at each and every university is having there, there is in a uh, this uh, integrity uh, uh, research integrity panel where that this panel is helping in case is in any doubt and you know challenged by someone this uh, this uh, panel is supposed to help the scholar and we are that as a librarian can play an important role uh, on these all these activities university grant commission this again given different guidelines related to the plagiarism policy how we can avoid any plagiarism, what are the different levels for the, you know, checking the plagiarism, what are the penalties and kind of other, uh, you know, legal act, uh, legal and other administrative action against the research scholar and the academic uh, fraternity. This is the one of the great role for the librarian as Richard, Dr. Richard is also explained how library can be a publishing partner. Because library is always working very closely with the publish handling publications, they know know the natures how that you know publishing cycle. What are the publishing publishing cycle? How manuscript is you know submitted to the publisher? 
how to uh, what is the uh, review system blind review system and then uh, different stages phases of the editorial board uh, before accepting that different kind of check and balances there and how librarian can help them help a research scholar to understand especially how to find a research journal for publishing a research uh, output like in a number of publisher they have started their you know uh, different tools the research journal finders for the publishing research like this ieee having their, uh, their own and different publisher different aggregators different service agencies they have an own tool for finding the research uh, you know journal for publishing their uh, research again there is an again another part is that open educational resources government of india has taken a lot of initiative in you know in in generation in creating and publishing a lot of open educational resources e parshala or that different books swams and many more you know nptel there are a lot of resources equally good than a published uh, resources so this is a great of role of librarian we need to curate all those resources and to create a web page in our library's website and put all those resources on the website and to encourage our scholar community to make use of those resources again there is a great uh, pub different publishing model is there open access publishing model is there green access uh, uh, gold access so we should tell that what is the benefit in case your scholar community is publishing the research in open access journal there is a more impact of the research comparatively that proprietary one publishing houses and what whatever publication they published in form of you know books in form of the book chapters research paper the great role of librarian to create and design their institutional repository to preserve what dr richard said one is important is the preservation of that research uh, output of a, an institution for a long term so that you can make it make it inaccessible and you can preserve for a long term and as in when your university or scholar community required any kind of the research publication make them available instantly on single click nowadays this is new role new area is emerging in the libraries this is nothing but a research data management research data management is the library again can play a very important role in managing the research data because scholar community are really not aware because when you are going to make use of open data repository like fixair how to create an metadata of the research data this is that this repository is very uh, simple to use simple to use that just you need to create your login and profile and then create upload your data and then have to write in metadata and that can submit and repository having a feature that each and every data is getting their doi digital object identifier and the data can be cited equally as the research publication research uh, article is pub, uh, cited by other publishers other scholar community so libraries nowadays you know in western uk us universities they already have started a lot of uh, you know activity there is a special division is there research data management but here in india this is the again uh, we are going to explore this uh, you know features and uh, we are going to interact and collaborate with the research community and first and foremost is to create awareness about the research data management why they should uh, manage the data and nowadays all the funding agencies they are asking the research data plan research data plan along with the research proposal so again uh, this is again close to library librarian to uh, you know manage the research help them to ma in managing the research data we also have you know designed at the subject gateway subject portal this is nothing but we have mapping mapped the research uh, profile faculty research uh, profiles faculty profiles with the research data what we have curated the different data from different sources and have created their you know profile and linked those all that resources with their profiles so that uh, because faculties they are very busy in the classrooms since uh, 9 am to 5 pm a uh, whole day they are busy in classes and hardly they have time to explore and search the the research data 
uh, or the research publication, research literature. So lab, in case we, we package all the resources based on their you know, expectation, based on the requirement, they can make use of this, uh, lit, uh, this, this resources on single click, click on the, without wasting of their time. So this is again a great role of librarian uh, to play. After that, we, we, can, we can create a kind of awareness among the scholar community in the library that like an ORCID. ORCID is in a unique ID like your in, in India, the Aadhaar card. Each and every scholar should have to have their ORCID ID. But uh, you, if you see that not more than 30 to 40 percent people in India, a scholar community having their ORCID ID. So these kind of uh, small, small tools and kind of initiative help them in uh, uh, help them in announcement of the research. Even we can uh, create an awareness like ResearchGate, Academia, or there is a lot of platforms are there where the uh, researcher can announce their research visibility. They can share their research for use, reuse, and can distribute one because there is a simple, simple concept behind that you know, impact of research is that once your research is more visible, more accessible, you will have a more uh, citation. Your, your research will be more in use. And how the Bennett University we started, we are going to start first and foremost, when I'm going to interact with the research scholar in my university, I'm just uh, take, uh, you know, uh, introducing themselves, the research uh, support services, and we are understanding the requirement and based on their research, uh, you know, exp uh, domain, their, their research uh, uh, areas, we are exploring the, you know, curating the data from web of science corpus or other, you know, uh, or other kind of uh, databases and analyze and make use of the bibliometric analysis to analyze and then we are providing to the research scholar. And based on the top cited papers, we are helping them to get download of those papers. And after getting download of those papers, we are, we are encouraging them to make reference management tool like a Mendeley. And thereafter they are creating their own personal library in Mendeley. And then while they review, write review literature, they can make use of this Mendeley and directly can manage their references and citations. And thereafter we are helping them while they're writing the you know, plagiarism check support services, we are extending them. And after that, we are interacting them and you know, uh, telling them how to how to publish, where to publish the research impactfully. We are conducting a lot of training programs, uh, you know, throughout the year. Uh, and recently, uh, recently uh, we have one workshop on essential skills of res uh, research writing and publishing. So this kind of initiative from the library then really helping you know research community. And library can have a more visibility, more visibility and more impact. So if you look at here, 4P, I was talking about 4P, planning, perform, publish, and preserve. When we're talking about planning, research scholars are supposed to plan the research, identifying research problem, review, literature review, hypothesis design. And how we are helping them? We are providing them. Uh, you know, we're telling them uh, how to identify information sources, primary sources, secondary sources, tertiary sources, or Google, uh, difference between Google and library search, and extracting them literature from different sources, and search strategies. Thereafter, we are analyzing the literature by using bibliometric analysis. And then, again, when they're performing the research, we are helping them in getting, download their top cited papers, organizing their paper in Mendeley, review the literature and citations, social academic networks for peer and review and training on research tool like SPSS. And then this is the public, when they're going to publish the research, we are helping them in identifying a journal based on the top impact factors, preparing the manuscript, accessing grammar software, Grammarly software and plagiarism awareness you know, activities and research writing workshop like the way I conducted in last week. And while they 4P, when they are publishing the research, finally we are archiving and preserving their research for long term by maintaining the institutional repository of the university. This is the complete uh, research support conceptual uh, framework.
I'm, as I told, I'm also uh, involved in the teaching of the research uh, scholar at Benedict University. And these are the four different uh, units we are teaching to the research scholars, five units. And uh, all these five units giving in uh, all the basic ideas about uh, research uh, sensor skills, exploring, searching literatures, reviewing literatures, research ethics and plagiarism, research publishing cycles, and research uh, you know, measurement. Research assessment is one of the important tasks. And we are helping them how to calculate impact factor, what is the H index, how to calculate the H index, how to increase the you know, citation, something like that. So this is the nothing but ultimate goal of my services is to reduce the time span of PhD scholar from four to five years to, to, to at least my ultimate aim is to save at least six months to one year of a research scholar by extending providing all these support from the library itself. And ultimately that how library is going to classroom. My concept is how lab, classroom, the student are not coming to the library is a different matter, but how library is going to classroom, this is one of the important. And if you are going to initiate this kind of activity in our university system from the library, definitely the role of libraries and librarian will uh, you know, uh, grow and the library librarian will become a more important uh, aspect and having a more visibility. So this is uh, my, uh, my presentation. Ultimately, uh, in nutshell, I would like to say librarian will have to understand the changing role of librarians and libraries. And ultimately, we have to serve, we have to support our research and academic community the way they look for. Because if we are designing our uh, library services and uh, you know, resources in our own way, probably they will not uh, use, make use of those resources. But definitely if we plan and organize our resources, our services, our you know, facilities, the way they look for, definitely they'll be happy. They will make use of your library resources and they will happily will work with the librarian more closely than ever. Thank you very much for uh, your patience and your opportunity and your time. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks a lot, sir. Thank you so much uh, that uh, you have uh, given so good information to all the librarians, what they have to do uh, in their libraries and uh, what we have to put some initiatives for the research purpose. I, uh, today, uh, I'm just uh, giving the good evening to all. Uh, I'm Dr. Deep Mala, uh, I'm uh, assistant professor at Bhartiya Skill Development University, Jaipur. Now I'm taking the process of uh, with this webinar further. As Namita Haman has some uh, problems, so I'm just taking off uh, further now. So now I would like to, uh, to proceed further this uh, webinar. I would like to invite Mr. Devendra Thakur, National Sales Manager, Informatics Publishing India, uh, limited uh, bangalore to put his product presentation over to you uh, thakur sir please thank you dr deepmala uh, welcome dr richard uh, dr sanjay kataria it was a nice presentation and i must thank all the authorities of rtla i remember dr kataria meeting you in srinagar during one of the uh, seminar so those days, I must say now, those days, there used to be seminars. Nowadays, they are webinars. I profoundly thank RTLA for choosing informatics as their technology partner for this webinar series. I'm just going to talk about what informatics is doing. But if you, before that, just convey you that informatics is celebrating now 40 years in this library community services. So we thank all for traveling with us in this passage to knowledge. We incorporated in 1980, headquartered in Bangalore. It was started by a library, uh, library information scientist, N.B. Satyanarayana. And we proudly say that this is the online company pre-internet era. We were serving some, some products 
which were working online when there was no internet in india so as i mentioned few minutes back i met uh, dr kataria a couple of years ago in srinagar but now lockdown is there no seminar is happening uh, in physical form all it is in virtual now so what happened during this lockdown of covid 19 how the library community the user community were behaving and how the publishing industry was responding to the requirement in the market there were three important things were happening as i mentioned we are completing our 40 years there was one responsibility towards the knowledge community during this covid lockdown we used to get three major there were many calls we divided those call in three major things many people individually want they were calling us and wanted to know how they can utilize this time positively this lockdown condition how can they spend their time with a good value in it mostly many were from the school side their parents is to call how can i make my ch child busy my kids busy my uh, the, those who are going to used to go to school now there is no school how can i make them busy how can they how can we engage them in some fruitful activity otherwise tv is there netflix is there time is going on but there is no fruitful activity another was many colleges were there calling us those those colleges did not have any content with them so they were asking us to give some content so that they can give the content to their uh, users during this lockdown and third set of universities were there they had content but whatever content they are subscribing to was available only on ip now during this lockdown condition uh, users cannot uh, access those content because they are not in the ip range they wanted us to give some service by which by by using all this service uh, uh, these users can access to the content subscribed by the university by sitting at home as i mentioned towards the responsibility towards the knowledge community and to because of the request that we came we we got it from the library community and the user community we solved the problem what we did we provide the remote access solution from informatics to all those who have given asked for the request that they requested that they wanted their content to be given to the users so that they can access to the content sitting at home so we are given the free trial of informatics remote access solution to all those university many colleges as i mentioned were not having any content what we did as a service towards the knowledge community we have opened up all our content whatever available with uh, informatics plus whatever our channel part our uh, publishing partners are there across the uh, across the globe their content we are given the trial of all this content without any expectation that they will subscribe we know this there is there, there won't be any subscription but as i mentioned we wanted to give this service to the community during the lockdown now content was given technology was given what actually was the third that many third request many individual students they were asking i want to use i want to have the quality time we came up with a product i'll mention about that product in future and you must have heard this buzzword in the market now oh learning management many schools now uh, recently one hour back there was a news uh, let me update you here iit bombay is the first institution in india who has already declared they are not going to have physical classes just an hour back this announcement has happened and many states are really discussing about not to have this physical schools because they know it's pandemic is still there and we all know that a wave is still there is not subsiding there is no uh, cure to it presently so they want to give this learning at home but they don't just don't want to give that there has to be some measure whether the student or the scholar has spent the quality time or not during this learning process 
now this process is happening how process through that process how the learning can be measured now these questions were there we came on board for support to help the knowledge community how as uh, dr kataria also mentioned dr richard also mentioned about the research we all must be knowing that informatics is helping the knowledge management in the libraries giving content technology and services you all know about jagat and we are proud in saying jagat is a, it qualifies to be a biggest scholarly database in the world produced by an indian company so what is jagat i you all know but what are the new features in jagat i'll be briefing you about it in next two three slides one more product is called as ibi it is a uh, news clippings for business i scholar is a platform wherein all indian publishers have been provided a platform all indian publishers are there on this i scholar we have a platform called as ebooks.in wherein including the reference book all books are hosted that is how all this content the the trial of all this content has given to all the colleges in technology as i mentioned easy proxy which is oclc product we have given the trial of easy proxy to hundreds of universities and colleges in india during this lockdown many more are going on still dr katra mentioned about uh, plagiarism in his presentation we do support plagiarism and we are giving the services of plagiarism through our product called as drillbit as he rightly mentioned ugc has given to pro uh, one product actually not two products ugc has given the product through ess in flipnet but that product is basically for only research scholars not other than that so many colleges and many schools they wanted to have the solution for plagiarism chip again we are proud to say here through us rigorous uh, r and d we have come out with the drill bit which is completely made in india product and we are getting tremendous response for of these products because at par there are many features in drill bit which are not there in leading plagiarism softwares across world right in services what we are providing koha which everyone knows now it's a library management software dspace it's an open source institution repository software same is the uh, case of eprints also ojs we are providing eprints uh, uh, erp next we are giving erp erp services to all colleges also and we are doing digitization services now what are the points in jagat which are important i wanted to mention here are we really missing the future because the prestigious journals this is you know there are many prestigious journals big publication volumes broader audience mainstream journals are there this all are subscribed in the library no problem but then there are some publication trends happening earlier older technologies are published were published in prestigious journal then high impact factor journals big publishers but new technologies are published in new technologies like machine learning like uh, artificial intelligence all those new technology terms are published in emerging journals small publication volumes no, there are not impact factor journals obscure journals we call them obscure journals jagat is the one which closes the gap between what is required and what is available jagat indexes 56400 plus journals which comprises of 67 million journal articles and 16 million open access articles you can see here jagat has scopus has more than 23000 journals indexed web of science 21000 journals ebsco 20 16000 journals informatics jagat is there which has got almost 50 56000 journals wherein this is the gap which we you don't want which we want you to not to miss 
what is happening with researchers as dr kataria was mentioning how he is helping the researchers they are actually completely loaded with the information as he rightly mentioned google versus this is how the situation is the challenges are where do i start my search where do i find a comprehensive journal database where do i get my article published how do i find the right article from journal which i have not subscribed to what are the challenges of librarian how to facilitate usage of resources finding article from journals not subscribed by the organization i'm justifying the this is very important extremely important one justifying management for the budget approvals renewals vis a vis usage a lot of money in subscribing but when it comes to renewal we have to library has to face a challenge in convincing management against the usage which may be a poor usage and important thing is managing journal subscription which is a headache for the librarian what is the solution to it jacket is the solution to it this is how the jacket platform looks like it has more than uh, it has got six subset areas agriculture art and humanities basic sciences biomedical sciences engineering technology and social and management sciences what we have done now recently we have started adding thesis from both ishod ganga and krishi kosh then new things have been done indication of journal ranking because we know there are many journals right from uh, not ranked but quality journals ranked journals so what we have started we have started indicating simago journal ranking h index nas rating per to particular article you come to know you open the article you come to know okay what is the uh, hr ranking of this article so you get not just quantity 56000 plus journals but you get the quality also included in that you can find out the quality by all these rankings you can filter the journals you can say you can uh, see in the screen now you can filter the journals as per the ranking if you want nas ranking or hr or h index everything is done what new have we have added is we wanted to have something like country of publication because there is something which is happening that country is very strong in that particular domain so if if you see it's a parasitic plants we have seen united states has got maximum articles in that published in the country like suppose sugarcane is there there might be india where maximum research is happening so like this we can have country of publication this is really helping all the researchers now as uh, dr kataria also mentioned about citation formats all the citation formats are already included in jgate format it is available so whatever article is there you can take out the article copy that as per the citation format you are fo you are following and you get it this is indication of hybrid open access journal you must be knowing there are two types of open access journals one is embargo open access journal and another is hybrid open access journal so this what is embargo journal the journals which are paid right now but they will become free maybe after 2 months or 3 months 120 days 365 days as per publishers policy so we mentioned all this indication we give if you can see the screen hybrid open access journals embargo open access journals we give all the indications of that now what exactly is happening we are allowing user for the personalization i i am interested in voice over protocol and i want whatever journals published in that i can create my i can manage my alerts and save it in jgate so whenever whenever an article is published for voip any of the journal i get an alert in my email box i just have to click the link and i'm right going to the article link. so this is great service now jgate is completely responsive to the mobile you can just go to the mobile browser and start accessing the jgate for for dd uh, for uh, consortia as we have added even watermark for that particular article and we are having this uh, consortia sharing through the platform which is actually implementing contu guidelines which is international guideline it has been implemented we are proud to say this is the only platform in india 
who supports counter guideline and helps in resource sharing and that is the reason this particular platform is there in all consortia in india as their gateway we have started getting many uh, feedbacks from the librarian community that why only journals why not to add some other things yes we did we added thesis we have added audio videos journals already there book series conference proceedings in audio videos also nptel you all must be knowing it's a initiative of iit chennai iit madras and many all iit faculties having their quality lectures on video form made available to all engineering community not just engineering but management as well so all these nptel videos ted talks all education videos in youtube all have been properly taken care in, in jge now if you want to really search what is there in the library a book also you want to search you can still search in jge because we have started we have already integrated koha which is lms in jge you can search that particular book you will come to know yes that book is available and you can actually hold that book you can reserve the book by using jge itself so what are the benefits for the library the library benefits are they can access and manage admin module manage organization profile upload manage and view library subscribed holdings very important this is headache to the librarian how to manage that thing but it is very very easy through jge extract detailed usage report for detailed decisive analysis from jge admin panel is with you only right now as i mentioned there were three requests coming through phone calls i talked about the content also now what individual request is to come we started giving something called as gimify gimify is a platform which helps learning the computer languages now you must be thinking why here now because many engineering students from maybe from civil engineering maybe for from uh, electronic engineering they must be learning their core subjects but they don't get to know about the computer advanced languages like uh, artificial intelligence and uh, uh, and many advanced languages like uh, r java advanced r so give me give me five is the solution to it many classes even even the, uh, you must have heard that cbsc board has already given that from last from class 5 to class 8 they'll be having this Uh, lang uh, computer languages now in engineering more than 10 programming languages are available in the curriculum bcom and in computer sciences the latest degree to make programming mandatory in commerce students also so problem is there with the colleges because they don't have the infrastructure setting program teaching infrastructure is challenging and very costly due to requirement of high skilled resources we all know the condition of many colleges about hardware 70% of the program is uh, programming is taught in uh, taught in theory only as teacher don't know the practical of it there is no tool to identify student weaknesses and helping to rectify it what are the problems of the student challenges faced by students the lack of quality infrastructure in the school college limited computer lab time for them if they have uh, to practice they don't get the lab time available for them there is no integrated solution like uh, logic building learning practicing and feedback there is no integrated solution available to them so all courses are scattered what is the solution we are going to give gimme 5 is a cloud based solution to learn programming for school and college students and scoring well in programming subjects learning a life skill and solve real projects it helps all the college students uh, basically from non non it engineering college engineering students they don't have the employability you know they are facing the problem so if they if they learn this advanced programming languages the employability chances are improved these are the value propositions as i mentioned a minute back which these are the courses if you can see python is there advanced r is there c++ mysql vocab all things are there 
can see the screen, you can observe it. We start through the learning games. You know, logic games are there. If you see the screen, there is a movement happening. So, school children are learning this through games. They develop their logic. Once the logic is developed, the coding starts. If you can see the screen now, on left hand side, the coding is going on. On right hand side, the execution of the code is happening. This is how it is taken care. The environment is provided to the student for practicing it. And what is happening, not just student, but teacher also require the training. We are providing training to teachers as well so that they can give a proper teaching to their students. This is how we are given this service during this lockdown. What was the next? And the last point, what I mentioned in uh, my uh, previous slides, it's a buzzword now that we want to have e-learning because many colleges I mentioned just now that IIT has already declared, IIT Bombay has declared that they're going, they are not going to have any colleges, uh, any lectures physically, they'll be having all virtual lectures. Many places it is happening that Oh, we want to have it, but we don't know how to measure it. And one of the question uh, asked or uh, addressed by Dr. Uh, um, that how the library, when it goes online always, what did happen to the library staff? It was in 2019 only, informatics had come out with the library technology conclave, wherein the subject itself was from ebooks to e-learning, libraries as learning hubs. We envisaged then only in 2019 that we should not have the library disconnected, but library should be made as a learning hub. Now, what is the solution to this? What the challenges faced? Quick Learn is a, a platform which is devised by informatics through a lot of uh, rigorous R&D we have used uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning excessively here. This is the platform which has five important components to it. Course management, content organizer, course delivery, digital exams, and learning assistance. I just complete these two, three points in next two, three slides. What is the objective of that particular course? It is taken care in this, how? We are doing course management. Now, very important thing, the course management, which, uh, which mentions, it should actually have the course objective to be properly devised in the course management. Just visualize what is the objective of the institution, what is the objective of that particular branch, and then session planning, attendance, when they spend the time on the ebooks or e-journals on that platform, the artificial intelligence just worked out and then it gives an output, okay, how quality time has been spent by the user, maybe student sorry or- to interrupt you. Sorry to interrupt you, Thakur sir, but yep. uh, it's, as I'm seeing the time, can you conclude this, your presentation? Yes, madam, it is almost done. I have okay, three slides you. to go. Okay, sir, thank you, carry on. Thank you. Now what this, in a nutshell, I'll just conclude here, what this platform helps in actually devising your uh, course curriculum, planning the session, having the sessions, attendance of the session, even the assessment per session, everything has been taken care of here, all data points are taken care. And then even if you see here in the screen also, at the same of the reading uh, platform, they can have highlighting, they can bring other links, links at the same point. The personal learning is taken care of here. These are the features which are which is learn is giving. So what is the offer from informatics? We can provide a digital library to college, institutes and universities, which can give, which can have journals and eBooks that can be accessed through remote authentication. We can provide the platform for learning computer programming, AI and machine learning. And we are really provide, uh, providing free trial to those who are requesting for it. 
thank you so much for your any questions you can reach out to me on this my email id nsm@informaticsglobal.com and you can reach out to me on my mobile thank you so much thanks again thank you so much sir uh, it's really a nice presentation to all of us to uh, learn so much of things about your product and about what the things what the services you are uh, providing us now we will move to the question and answer segment and uh, before that uh, i just want to clear that i will take all the question firstly to the dr richard gartner sir so the first question to uh, gartner sir is that how does digital book deteriorate more rapidly than printed one let me unmute myself <clears throat> well um um electronic books are stored on media such as optical media and tape and so on um which probably have a lifetime of about 10 to 20 years it's improving all the time but obviously it doesn't compare to uh, the hundreds of years which we can expect paper to to um survive and for this reason to preserve uh, a digital book we have to have a program where it is regularly copied from one medium to another and um digital preservation um incorporates such processes into the way it operates so uh, digital preservation is an ongoing process but um it does require um the, the copying of um digital objects on a regular basis to ensure their long term preservation possibly in the future we will have digital media which can last a good deal longer than uh, is currently possible but um at the moment we we cannot trust that they will be around for m- much more than a few decades i hope that answers the question uh, the next question is that uh, is uh, digital life cycle contents are end points or is continuous process Well it is a continuous process as I showed in in the um diagram it is always depicted as a circle I showed a, a relatively simple diagram of the life cycle others are rather more complicated but they're all circular <coughs> to emphasize that the processes involved are continuous um and when once a digital object is created you can go and present it for one is that can you brief what are the options available for school librarian and globally what others are doing to cope up with covid-19 pandemic oh well yes uh, this is an ongoing issue here we um the institute i work at has been closed since march and probably will not reopen till september and uh, we're putting plans to distance people and put up screens and probably require wearing of masks but we hope to have another webinar shortly dr katara and i have been talking about having another webinar on um current uh, plans for dealing with covid-19 and uh, plans for reopening so uh, i hope we can um, let you know about that in, in the near future the last one is that for you sir uh, yes. according to current de- uh, demand of digital environment what are your perspective on how libraries are going to act as an archive center and uh, kind of museum for digital preservation in the near future well i think i think there's now a, a great overlap between uh the library uh, uh the library function making um, materials available to people and the archival function preservation function um um and i i think that is probably something which librarians have to take account of rather more than the traditional counterpoints preservation is important in a traditional library as well uh but the skill set involved in preservation is is not quite as technical as for digital preservation so um i i think certainly the digital library and the archive and the museum have to work very closely together to ensure the preservation of their digital collections um so it's a very complicated procedure um area of work and, and um people can specialize in digital preservation alone because it is a complex discipline uh, but this one where where all three sectors have to work together quite closely thank you so much sir now the uh, i'm moving to uh, sanjay katariya sir uh, the some questions is uh, asked by some attendees to you sir the first one is that 
how to develop collection of ebooks in academic libraries in rural india with a special reference with local syllabus when you are going to talk about the collection development whether it is in a books or journal there is a two kind of mr takur also said that they are having access of lot of uh, plenty of ebooks and journals uh, which is available in public domain and the digital library of india is also an initiated and a part of that the world digital library is there and uh, again there is a great role of librarian again to curate the resources from different sources and organize those resources on their local server local uh, web page and facilitate those resources to their community again depend on your requirement of your faculty student what kind of resources they are looking for accordingly then we as i said we need to curate collect reorganize and repackage the resources the way so that they can make use of those resources easily as the thakur also said they had in a kind of provision lot of videos lot of other resources they already have indexed in the single uh, for a single window search so what else you want basically so we should how to have a kind of first of all understanding about the resources we need to collaborate with our fraternity and just to understand what exactly they look for and then accordingly we have to curate organize and repackage and make it available to them to them okay sir the next one is that uh, how to improve the visibility of our research article say there is a lot of uh, means uh, and uh, first and foremost that i have just spoken and shown various platforms are available make use of your social medias now there is a trend in western my, richard is might be agreed they uh, scholar they used to use tweet they used to tweet uh, you know their publication as and when they get and publish their uh, public uh, research they tweet their you know uh, detailed publication the people who who is following them then can aware about the research publication and with the platform like academia platform like research gate and there are many more where the research scholar we librarian need to understand and need to create an awareness among the scholar community to create kind of to make use of those kind of platform to create their profile on that kind of platform where they can follow each other where they can get collaborate the, their peer and they can you know do more effective research okay sir uh, the question is uh, that what kind of skills library and information science professionals must have to keep pace with this kind of environment like uh, the pandemic era we are facing i believe uh, that there is a great role of librarian libraries and libraries changing very uh, dynamically and if you look at over period of time last 10 to 15 years how libraries has been changed over the period of time especially kind of availability of kind of resources availability kind of tools and technologies available for managing the resources okay and we library need to first and first and foremost to equip ourselves okay we need to learn ourselves kind of tools technologies available like the uh, that you know thakur is also said they designed a kind of project but there are many kind of you know tools are available i was talking in a previous workshop in last week kind of reference management soft take an example reference management soft like in mendeley we should equip our shelf how to make use of that particular then you create an awareness and tell the scholar community to make this use of those kind of tools which which will really impact on their research or the academic activity kind of resources available created by you know different university globally lot of free resources are available created by howard university or that other universities you know available in public domain so first and foremost we should understand and should know the your your fraternity we should collaborate our fraternity and then what they are expecting and looking from the library side definitely we should plan organize and facilitate that kind of services and support to them 
Thank you so much, sir. I think uh, the all the attendees who put their questions, they are quite satisfied with the an answer uh, given by our panelists or the speaker. Now I am moving the session to uh, moving this uh, webinar towards, and uh, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Kamar Abbas, sir, to put vote of thanks. But before that, I want to introduce uh, him. Uh, Mr. Kamar Abbas, sir, uh, presently working as an assistant librarian in government JLN Medical College, Ajmer. He has a vast experience of 16 years plus in the field of library and information science. He has served various institutions. He has also worked for the post of council member, treasurer, and vice president of Rajasthan Technical Library Association. He is also a vice president of Rajasthani Medical Library Association and ex treasurer of Federation of Health Science Library Association. He is also recipient of RTLA Best Technical Librarian Award 2015 and Best Young Librarian Award 2019 from Medical Library Association. Now I am saying to uh, that, uh, putting uh, over to you, uh, Kamara Basar, to put your, your proposed vote of thanks. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Deepmala, madam. Uh, it's my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion. I am on behalf of Rajasthani Technical Library Association, extend my thanks to Dr. Sanjay Kataria, sir. Without his support, it would have been impossible to conduct the webinar. Thank you, Sanjay Kataria, sir. My heartfelt thanks to Dr. Richard Gartner. Your kind support and valuable contribution and encouragement have given new dimension to our work. Thank you, Dr. Richard Gartner, sir. I am highly thankful to the Informatics Publishing Limited team, especially Mr. Devin Thakurji, who worked quite hard for success this webinar. Gratitude to Dr. Rajkumar Bakar, sir, Pattern RTLA and Dr. Anita Jain, President RTLA, who were not only the conveners, but also made this event a successful one in this virtual era. My sincere thanks to the office bearer of RTLA, Dr. Bhup Singh Ji, Namita Parikh Ji, Nitu Gujran Ji, Dr. Rajiv Pandya Ji, Mr. Subhash Saini Ji, Triveni Sharma Ji, Mr. D.R. Bhichar Ji and all members of RTLA who always work for promoting the librarianship profession and actively support the RTLA activities. Cheers to all the people who help us directly or indirectly. This webinar would not have been successful without your kind support. Last but not the least, I would like to thank all the participants for their presence and virtually participation. In this tough time, the importance of coordinating and sharing information was also one of the key factors. I welcome the support expressed by all of you. I am confident that our presence here surely enhances our knowledge. Stay safe. Jai Bharat. Namaskar.